I want to thank Central University at Tiruvallu, especially Vice Chancellor Professor uh, Singhajir, Professor Sandershaker, and other faculty members here, and also the faculty members of the other departments for giving me a chance to talk about the topic India China. Of course, what I am going to give today is not my work. This work is based on my first. Let me start with an example, which is uh, are you able to listen? Okay. This is based on a paper which is written by <laughs> Professor Robert Allman and Professor Master of the Hebrew University. It's an interesting article in the sense that the Jewish people have a monograph which is written maybe nearly 2000 years back during the Babylonian times. Where in those days, how they tackled the problem? Let me write a few numbers and you can see what it is, and I explain it in this number ratio. This is a paper based on. Which appeared in Journal of I think the year of publication is 1983. The authors are very well in words. The title of the paper, the title of the paper is Bankruptcy Problem and a Game Theory Analysis. It's an interesting thing we said. It is, these numbers are taken from Talmud. Talmud is something like our Vedas. Which describes problems related to criminal activities, civil activities, which just business men. And this is a civil problem. Let me try to see. Let me describe the problem. See, there is a king and he has three wives. Suddenly he dies and he left an estate. There is one son. First wife claims some money, second wife claims some money, third wife claims some money. But if the total is the sum of these claims is less than or equal to the value of the estimate, there is no problem, it can be given. But in general, the sum will be like that. The claim uh, asked by these three people, the sum will be strictly more than the value of the estimate, in which case, how do you divide the money? And they are done, and let me give you the numbers and see how they are done. The authors of the paper is Ali Ahmad. He's a Nobel laureate and Michael Master. Both are from the Faculty of Mathematics, Hebrew University. Of course, he's no more master. So let me, this is the numbers which they have taken from Tom. So D1, 100, D2, D200, and D3, 300. And the value of the estate, the estate is, if it is, I mean, these are some units of money, it could be 100,000 rupees or 100,000 dollars, whatever, these are things. And the value of the estimate, I mean, this estate is 100. These are the claims by the three wives. If it is divided as this, then they are divided equally to the three wives. If it is 200, it is 50, 75, 75. Already you can see the departure. Here it is not given 
divided by 3, that's not the number which appears. It's 50, 75, 70. 300, which is 50, 100, and another. It is in the ratio 1 is 2 is 50. That's the way it is done. If it is 400, it is 50, 125, and 2. So these are the numbers which they have taken from Talmud, which was written some 2000 years back. See, this to get there is they want to see what is the last layer behind these numbers. If it is 100, it is equal to 1. If it is 200, it is divided by 50, 75, 75. If it is 300, it is 70. But this man's being after this is only 50. It's kept at that. So you can see the last one here. If it is 100, I mean, if it is 200, it is still 50. That is, the last is 50. But here, the last one here is 200 minus 125. So here it is 225. So they want to make sure the last one, each one of them, is something like 50. After that, it is 50. So what is the sanctity of this? How did they arrive at these numbers? Because when you add 50 plus 75, it's 200. When you add this, this is 4. Now, in the same problem, there is also another problem, which is this, this is called the government problem. See, there is a government. This is a very expensive government, very strong. And there are two claimants to the government. One of them says the worth of the entire government should come to her. The second one says half of them should come to us. How do you divide the worth of the government among the two claimants? You understand what I am saying? There are two claimants. Suppose the uh, government is worth, say, $500,000. How do you divide? The first one, let me call that as C1, claimant 1. Claim full worth. The second one, claimant 2, half. That is, she wants the entire triangle. And the second one wants two good people. Give me two good answers. So that is their claim. How do you divide? They have given the solution. Let me make this problem a little more easily from a mathematical point of view so that you can understand how we have done That is, what, what the answer is, since the second one claims are the remaining half can be given to this one. That is, you give first two. Then, out of 500, 250 remains. Then you divide equal. So, 1 will be 5. So the first one gets 375, the second one gets 100. So that is how the answer is given. Or the solution is given in those ways. Understand, this is what is called the government. Let me try to write it precisely. What is the government? Yes. So let me write down E and D1. The claimant of the first one, D2 is the some number, D2 is some number. Okay. I'm going to destroy this problem. This is the government question. I'm going to explain. So this E is going to be divided into two parts, X1 and X2. How X1 and X2 is written is as follows. X1 equals. See, since the second claimant Claims D2 from E, from E you subtract D2. If it is negative, nothing will be saved. If it is positive, take the positive part. Okay. So X1 gets E minus D2 plus. I mean, this rotation, I mean, for any real number, A, A plus means maximum of A and Z. So since the second one claims D2, you subtract that. Whatever remains can be given to the first one. There is no problem of it. Okay. And the X2 is the for the second person. D1 is claimed by the first person. So E minus D1 plus can be given. 
to the second. Is it okay? That, that should not be an objection. Now, whatever remains divided between the two, equal. So E minus E minus B one plus minus E minus B two plus divided by two, same thing. So this x one is is how this is. This is the this is what is called normal equation. Now one can easily see if the E increases naturally x1 and x2 increases. It's a monotonic function of E. X1 E will be more if E is more. It's monotonic E. So that is one thing which remember. Okay. Now let me let me erase it and I can write it here. So, okay. So, so. I'm going to describe the problem in general. So what is the bank correction problem? Bank matter definition. I have E which is to be divided among n people, A1, A2, A3. Here I am now. So I have to divide this E in the n parts, x1, x2, x3, such as there's some added to such a problem is for, and I'm going to assume problem is interesting only when b1 plus b2 plus bn is more than because if it is the other equal to e, then no, there is no problem. Just give it. It's not interesting. So the problem is interesting only when this sum is strictly relevant. Such a problem is called a dark question. Terminal so, problem is that. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce two definitions. One, definition one, call the vector x, x1 plus x2. And the solution to the boundary problem, to the BP problem, if x i's are non negative and the sum added to yeah. any subdivision of G. Okay, so uh, any. Any such vector is called a solution to the bankruptcy problem. Now, I will say a solution is consistent, that is the second definition, or x, a consistent solution. Because you may be going, I'm not making any game today, I'll come to the page. Because this problem can be posed as a cooperative game with canvas and players. Or x, a consistent solution. To be not blood pressure, this is number is bankruptcy. Okay. If one x is a solution, that is divided like this, I said the sum added to E. The second one is the following for all i not equal to j, write E i j. As x i plus x i. Because I'm, you know how many vector is given. X one is so I am this is my notation for ERT. Now consider the oh, body. Uh -huh. first game here, ERT with the following. Consider the common principle A with the following E I J and D I F E G. I told you how to split this EIJ into the two numbers, yi, yi. Let yi, yj be the solution 
given by the government principle oi 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 solution to this problem given by government principle you know how to have already discussed now in order the solution to be a consistent solution what i demand is why i should coincide with x i why they should coincide with x is that clear what i am saying see you have a question which is a solution x and x yeah. yeah. there is some other to me i say the solution is consistent you look at all possible i not equal to j and write e i j which is nothing but x i plus x a given by the vector now write down the solution given by the government principle call that as y i and y j this y i should coincide with x i y j should coincide with x i am not writing it right. it should be happening for any i not equal to j that is important then i say this is a consistent solution let's look at the solution given by tom in that problem you will see that it is a consistent solution let me try for one minute it is a mystery i have to stop let me take this easy one say four and five d1 is 100 d2 is 200 D three is three hundred, and I have written the number. I wrote the number is fifty, one twenty five, and two twenty five. Is the number? That is, the first one gets fifty, the second one gets one twenty five, the third one gets two twenty five, and some are four. This is. I claim that this is a consistent solution. This is consistent. Why? Let me do. I will take one and two. What is e one two? E one two is one seventy. D one is hundred, and D two is two hundred. Okay. And here. I mean, because the x one is fifty, the x two is one hundred. Now let me write down the common principle solution. So y one will be one seventy five minus two hundred. Because whatever it is, I can give it to be square one. That means it is zero. Y two will be one seventy five. Minus hundred plus. So this is seventy five, and this is zero. So seventy five plus zero you subtract from one seventy five. So hundred you divide equal. So fifty plus. That's all. You can try for every one of them. It will satisfy. I just did it. You can do it. Or accept on faith. Uh, so this is a consistent solution. Now there are several questions which come up now. Given a bankruptcy problem, does there exist a consistent solution? That is the first question which you have to answer. The second one is: if there exists a consistent solution, is it unique? The answer to both is yes. That is proved in the paper. It's a very easy proof. You can do it. There is only one consistent solution. Or any bankruptcy problem, and the uniqueness is easy because it follows from the fact that I mentioned that the government principle, the solution x one and x two are monotonically that gives you this. Okay, the other one also is not difficult; you can easily understand. It. It doesn't require much. I mean, no knowledge of game theory is required. Just straightforward. Okay. So see the paper. Um, it's very well described. Okay. Now the question is: the next thing they do is, I mean, the title of the paper is "Bankruptcy Problem: A Game Theoretic Analysis." Where does the game enter? 
more cooperative way. So that I will go to do with this example. So, see, similarly, you can do it for gender. So here I am not writing a main here one of the main results of the paper, namely for every bankruptcy problem, there is a unique consistent solution. That is the result. Uniqueness is here because it's the solution of one and one So let me do it for general and for some name and then I'll specialize in this example. D D1 D2. I'm going to associate a cooperative game initiated by John Amon and Oscar Perkins. They have written a volume one. The first game theory, I mean, the first book on game theory was written in the year 1947, published by the Senate University Press. was a famous mathematician in the 20th century. And the FTA subject was more or less created by him, along with Oscar Morgenstern, who is an economist from Austria. Both were at Princeton when they wrote it. Anand was the professor at the Institute for Economic Study, and uh, Oscar Morgenstern was a professor of economics. So they wrote it. And people used to joke, come in. They used to make joke or fun out of these two. People, but Fernando uh, dictated and asked for topics written. That's what I just heard you. Just say it back. Because one of them is a mathematician, the other one comes. It's just it's a great economics, there's no doubt about it. All right. So, in that, see, I'm not, uh, see, you, you should know when the actual game theory, as we understand now, starts. Let me give you a brief history. See, the one of the earliest results in the 2% game was solved by Borel. I mean, all of you would have heard the name Borel. The, the, the one who is, I mean, who was killed now alive, I mean, he's no more, but his father, he proved the result for the 2 by 2 case, what is known now as a minimax theorem or a matrix theorem, or 2 by 2. And we did not solve for 3 by 3 or for more general. Many people thought the result would be false because he proved it in the year 1902 or 1903 in connection with something. That was not his field. And later on, the same result was independently proved by Ronald A. Fisher, the father of statistics from Britain. He needed this result, he proved it independently in order to find. The sampling distribution of the correlation coefficient. So use use. But people didn't know what's happening in the general number of matrix. The game is described as follows. See, there are two players. One player has young strategy. I'll give you some example. Tomorrow I thought I'll do it, but anyway, I'll give you a description. Player one has young two strategy. I mean, ah, maybe I can tell you the game which I'm going to start tomorrow. This you might even play. Each player has three objects in their hand. It's called a rock, rock paper, scissor. These are the three objects. Not the not big one, small. Okay. Paper and scissor. And the other one also has the same. And each one of them have to choose one object simultaneously. This is important. Game theory is not. Dealing with games like chess or tambour, because in those games you know what the other person is doing, and the other person also knows what you are doing. They are called games of perfect information, namely chess, tambour game, parlor games. In general. That's what it is. Game of Nim also is one such. Now, game day is dealing with. Imperfect information, that is, what one is doing is not known to the other. For example, if you want to take a game, bridge is one such. It's a game of imperfect information. Because if you know how to play bridge, suppose I build, then I may not know what the how I know how the other 26. The other 26 cards are distributed between two of his opponents. 
But how it is distributed, you know. So it's a game with imperfect information. So game theory is concerned with games with imperfect information. Okay. So in the matrix game, I mean in the game which I described, rock, paper, scissors, each object is chosen by the individual player simultaneously. Or there may be a screen, so you won't know what he's doing. The referee will compare and then. So if both objects coincide, then suppose I am a player one, I get zero. Okay. He also gets zero. Suppose I choose paper and you choose scissor. Scissor can cut the paper. That means you will. So you will be given some points. If I want to write you know, the payoff in terms of myself, I put a negative number. If, if because it is written, if I write a payoff with reference to one player, if it is minus three and it is written with respect to my, if, then I have to be If it is positive, you are So there is a three by three matrix with numbers positive and negative. Suppose you play this game, if you want to play this game optimally, what you do? That's the question which. For non wanted parties. But of course, he takes it uh, generally, basically. And then he proves such a result as a VMAX part. By that, what, I, what he means is the following associated with the equity M cross M matrix, the numbers are the payoff for one player. If it is positive, he gets it. If it is negative, he has to give it to the other. We can understand. With every such matrix, you can associate a unique number, we call the value of the game. And not only that, each player has an optimal way of playing the game. Because if the matrix is written with respect to my view, then I want to maximize my payoff. How is it? So I have an optimal strategy which will fetch me at least the so called value of the game which I told. And player 2 has an optimal strategy which will restrict my. Average income to our most. All these objects exist as the famous theorem in the one. He proved it in 1928. That is where game theory has actually started. But of course, the point is his proof is very involved in the sense that he uses some complicated fixed point theory. So people were attempting to find whether one could give a simple. Later, some of the mathematicians were able to. Give two using the separation theorem of two contexts. There is, if you have two non empty context sets which are disjoint, then you will always draw a hyperplane. One set lying on one side, the other one lying on the other side. So we will use that as a But the question remained and then elusive whether you were given constructive proof in the sense that can you evaluate the value of the game given that? And also can you evaluate the value of the set for one for each way? This was done by George Dunstan, you would have heard, who is a famous war specialist. But he was doing his PhD in the University of California at Berkeley, I think, if I'm not wrong, and he was working on double sanding problems. And then in that connection, he was interested in solving large scale linear equations with many unknowns. So he developed a method called the simplex method. And then when he saw the matrix problem in which Kamanan was attacking, it can be formulated as a simple linear programming problem and he gave a set that happened in 1940s. So that's just a remarkable achievement in game generations. Giving a constructive to the Linux, which gives you the value and also a value. You can even find all possible. The extreme of so that is the contribution of the dancing, dancing, but somehow it is the noble price. I don't know how, but it's a sad story. Because, see, there is another economist uh, from Russia who got the Nobel Prize for working along similar lines. Okay. Now let me come back to the description of the Alperson cooperative games here. I have a E and B1, D2, there are young players. I mean, there are young persons, so the player set here is young players. Young is one, two. This is the players. 
generally young and young and young All right. So let me. So any yes is not an empty set, and which is a subset of yes is called a quiet. And it is the usual. It's all a quiet. Of course, the, the entire prayer set is also a polish. It is called a grand polish. Yen is called grand polish. So, this game, you are going to have young players, and these are the thing, and now, with each year, I'm going to associate a number which is called the worth of the course. With each correlation, and yes, I'm going with the help of this, I'm going to associate the number. Suppose yes is given. Okay. What is V of X? V of S is worth of the correlation. See, but what can we say? Say one V of n. V of n is e. Okay, that's obvious. V of n is e. Yeah, that's what the maximum they can get because that is what the maximum available money. So V of n, obvious things. That is easy to see. Okay. Now V of n is by definition. Is it by definition? I mean, as in the case of government uh, minister, I'm going to use that to define the beer. You take the other players who don't belong to S, add the D's corresponding to that. From E, subtract that amount and take the plus of it. If it is negative, it's zero. This is what? That is, this is equal to V of the is e minus summation pi i, I belonging to the complement of this player set yes yes or no and take the so this is going to be a real number if it is negative we have less than zero if it is positive we have less than zero is that clear this is what we did in the government principle See, these are the claims by the complement of the set S, E S. So, whatever remains can be given to this polish. If it is negative, divide it as here. Same as you did for the garment. So, I have defined the player set and also I have found and we have the empty set is taken to be zero always. So this is what is called then an n plus n k. That is, you have a player set. That's it. But of course, here I am defining it as so that is a problem. Is that clear? That is, you have a player set. And then for every correlation, you have to attach a number. Now, what do you do with this? Okay, you can do that. Fine. What is the point in just doing it? You have to see what you can do further. And that's all for now. And all this they do one of them. So let me try to, I mean, let me consider this for the three player game which I have given so that you understand what I have done in my definition. For the backups. So here in the bankruptcy power E D one equals hundred, D two equals two hundred, and D three equals three hundred. Now let me take E equal to say four hundred. Okay. What is the cooperative game associated with that? I'm going to okay. P of one will be classified. That is the coalition containing player one. Because there are three players and the total is total. 
is so v of one is simply four hundred minus what is the complement of one two hundred so this is five hundred so four hundred minus five hundred plus which is zero. Plus is equal to four hundred. Are we clear? Yeah. Three hundred, right? Did I make a mistake? No, is it three hundred, sir? Is it three hundred? We are four. Oh, I'm making a mistake. From V of one is V two and V three. Cannot be four. Something is wrong. But where one? Oh no 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 sorry. Four hundred. I think it's okay. I am writing it here. Minus five. B uh, two plus B three. How much? Five hundred. Yes. Which is it? I wrote it wrong. See, we have that is E minus the complement of. That pair D two D three and then the plus. I think that's how I wrote it. I'm not wrong. So it is zero. So V of two is simply four hundred minus D one and D three. Four hundred plus this is zero. V of three is four hundred minus D one and D three. Three hundred. This is hundred. And what is V of one two? V of one two is four hundred minus V three, which is three hundred. Plus three hundred. V of two three. I mean, V of one three is four hundred minus V uh, two. V two is four hundred plus V of uh, two three. Is four hundred minus one is hundred plus, and we have one three. I already told you before. So this is again cooperative game, associated. Is it okay? I mean, I mean, remember this is how I define. We have s is we have n hundred subtract the i i in the complement of Yes, with yan, infinity yes, and then the plus. This is the definition. You recall. So this is the game. That's fine. So for each one of the numbers, I have a property game associated. Is that clear? All right. Now what do you do with these numbers? Okay. Now let me develop the theory. See what are the problems which uh, people are interested in. Suppose the grand coalition is formed, how do you divide the money among the young players? Because suppose there are young companies compete in the market and then jointly they make a profit. One of the questions which they want to address is how to divide the money. So that is the question. Do it. So the question is the problem. I'm going to introduce a notation. Let me erase this. Well, I'm going to define the set of equations, what is called equation. It's a set of factor x and rn. Such that x is x i the i coordinate of x is greater than equal to v of the individual coalition i and summation x i i is equal to one to n such 
See any such partition x on x direction with each x i greater than or equal to vi and summation x i equal to vi is called an implication. So this is a set of implications. And instead of raised in which you can divide the number summation, I mean V of yeah. But of course, there are two things which I want to address here. One is what is this? What is the rational behind it? See, unless because if I stand alone, I'll get V of what? Why should I accept anything less than that? This is what is called individual rational. Because what of I mean, if I stand alone, my work is be of one. I don't want to accept anything less than that. I can be as well alone. If I am offered anything less, I won't accept it. So then this is so this condition I mean this should be true for all. This is what is called individual rational. Individual rational. And this is what is called an efficient allocation. Because why do you want to uh, make it less than Vn? Rather than Vn is not possible because we have, that is what I have most. So I would like to put it all the to distribute. So this is called the efficient efficient. So any vector which is which satisfies the individual rationality and the efficient axiom is called an implication. And now this is the correction of our implication. So we have formed it, okay. What else? What do you do with this set? That is the next question. I mean the definition, and let me give you a maybe let me give you an example so that you understand what I am writing. Right. Let me take n is equal to 1, 2, 3. And uh, I have a function v. I will define v of any individual set is 0 and v of 1, 2, 1, 3 equal to v of 2, 3 equal to 1 and v of 1, 2, 3 equal to 1 and v of the empty set. I mean, this is a probability case. I will use the numbers. Corresponding to all the coefficients. Here there are three, here there are three, seven, three. The powers are different for each. And just here. See what this game tells you is if two players join, then they can make one unit of money. If all of them also join, then also you can make one. And individually they will get zero. So if you stay around the other two to join and they will get. So, so here what is the imputation space? Imputation space, this example I B is x1, x2, x3. Such that xi is non negative and summation xi. The space of probability of training thesis. Now, in the example that I constructed, the number, the total number is 400 and the V of the, some of the things are 0, some are positive like that. But any game can be converted to the 0 or not. Very simple, it's a chicken game. Like some the, the new model, I mean, rescaling and things like that and adding and things like that. Any, I mean, and not only that, they will be isomorphic. In the sense that, okay, I have not described the domination, but then I can tell you rationally. In other words, even any n person game, you can always bring that game into your game with zero or normalization. That is, for every correlation, yes, we have this is a number in the intro of zero and one, and we have the entire for a grand correlation one, we have the individual correlation is zero. It can be done. It's what is called zero one normalization. That can be done. Okay. So I'm not doing it, but one can easily. I and mean, in fact, if you are interested in uh, getting details of these things, one of the books which you can refer to is 
Owen. Milke, Tiger Books, Milke. Of course, there are other books also where we have been making. But McKinsey's book is a very old one. He's basically a mathematical logician. So he just ran and then he wrote a book. Do you know? Because only matrix came continuously. I mean, he, he discusses some form of things. But of course, zero normalization and other things. I think one may be a better book in the sense that it gives more things. These are some So here, see here, you can assume when this B takes only two values, binary value in this example, either zero or one, you can see the example I have given. So any game in which it takes either zero or one is called a simple or a voting game. This, this kind of games are called simple game. Or voting. I mean, you can ask question and then there is nothing. The field is a regular class. So if you have any question, I would like to answer. So any game in which V takes the value either 0 or 1 for every coalition is called a simple game or a voting game. Now, in order, I mean, if you have a voting game, you don't need to specify it. You can call any coalition which takes a value 1 as a winning coalition. Anything zero means it's a losing point. So you can describe in terms of that winning or losing. See, for example, suppose you want to uh, pass a law in the in our parliament, you need either a simple majority or some numbers. So there you can see anything uh, is passed, that coalition is winning. But it's not passed, that means the coalition is losing. And in fact, we are going to assume that the simple games are proper simple. That is, in other words, if I have an S for which V of S is 1, V of the complement must be 0. Because I don't want both of them to be that is proper. I don't want that to happen. Either the toilet, I mean, if the S is winning, the complement is 0. And if the S is winning, any super set is also given. Because you have more numbers uh, who are agreeing to the law which you are supposed to pass. So those are reasonable axioms. So let me say that a simple game is a proper simple game if V of S is 1, V of uh, S complement is 0, and if V of S is 1, if T is a set containing S, V of T is also. Such a game is called a proper simple game. In fact, they are very well uh, studied games, simple games. In fact, the here, again, I mean, in a simple game, you can define what is called a veto play, like in the security council. See, in the security council, if uh, any one of the five members says no, that law is dumb, and it never gets passed. So, what is a veto player in a proper simple game? Call player I a veto player if you take the complement of that player in the losing condition. That's all. Because suppose China doesn't want something, they will say no. So if you take even other numbers, it's never passed. So it is a losing condition. Call a player I, a veto player, V of n minus i, leave out the player i, then it's a losing condition. That's the definition. In a proper simple game, a player i is called a veto player, V of n removing i is a losing condition. So that's the all right, those are some of the terminology which okay. Next thing, what do you do with this uh, set imputation set in general? Of course, I'm going from now on, I'm going to assume it is in zero or normalization because it's easy for me to decide in terms of the problem. And anything can be recast on this one. So I assume this is left summation x y equal to one. Yeah, this is always okay. I will assume without loss of time. There is no harm. Assume. So it's a space of probability. It is easy to interpret. Okay. Now here, 
they describe the notion of domination. Anayan and Morganston carry this further. What do they do? I take two implications. X, Y, from Y. We say, say, X dominates Y. This means X dominates Y. That's how it will be. X dominates Y. Provided there exists a set S yes, non empty condition and xi is greater than yi for all i. Yes. It is as far as the quality S yes is concerned. They will prefer this vector to this vector because each one of them is getting more. That's the reason. Of course, I have to add one more condition because it's a game where V is there. I have to relate it to the V, otherwise, there is no one. Summation XI, I in S is less than equal There are two conditions. One is as far as the coalition S is concerned, they prefer X to Y because each one of the members of S gets more. Two, the sum cannot exceed the worth of the coalition, which is given by the function. Then I say X comes. We say that two coalitions, X dominates Y, X and Y, X dominates Y. If you can find a non empty coalition, yes. Such that xi is greater than yi as far as players coming from s, and summation xi should not exceed the worth of the Now let me give you an example. I'll take the simple game, the one which I wrote, it's called simple majority game. That is, v of 1, 2 equals v of 2, 3 equals v of 1, 3. Here the, the imputation set here is in this example is x1, x2, x3. Probably you are telling this xi you know summation is one. Okay. Now I'm going to pick two vectors. I'm going to pick three letters to tell you something. X equals R R C O. There are three, three I and mean, there are three common numbers. Y is one third, one third. And C is another equation, which is three by four. Zero, one by two. I have taken three vectors from this space. Clearly, x dominates y. Because half is bigger than one third, half is bigger than one third. So if this is domination takes place, one is one, two, that's what my guess is one. And the B of S is one, half plus half is two. It satisfies. Is it clear? It satisfies both the conditions. So the vector r of zero dominates one third of the r. Now the vector y dominates the vector z. Because uh, one third is bigger, one third is bigger. So two. And remember, one third plus one third is less than or equal to B of two three. Is that clear? But the relationship is not transitive. 
And he's like, oh, that x value means y. I mean, even in the same, then he's okay. But if he's different, he's not good. That is, x dominates y, but y dominates z doesn't mean that x is dominating. That is, in other words, the relation which is introduced by one and one is not a, what do you call it? Or partial. Partial. It's not a partial. Sir, we can have another 10 minutes. This is not a partial. This is not. Another 10 minutes for this. Oh, this is not a partial. And not only that, you can see, on the other hand, x dominates, I mean, z dominates x. Because 3 volt is bigger, 1 volt is bigger. Z dominates x. By a So it's not a partial order, it's some order. Of course, here are there, here are there any statisticians sitting here? Yes. Maybe in the online somebody may be there. Somebody. Okay. Here I have to tell you something. In statistical decision theory, people talk about admissible strategies. That is, you, you have two strategies and they describe one is better than the other. If the risk using the first one is smaller than or equal to the risk using the second strategy. If you have a strategy which is not possible, but you cannot dominate the truth, then such a rule is called an I come to the paper. So that is various terminology which is used in the cooperative game theory is taken by Abraham Waugh, who wrote a book on statistical decision theory. With that, it gives a that is the in testing problem, that is, suppose you want to introduce a new drug to the market. How do you do that? You apply the drug to the patient and then find out how many people are you. You already may have some existing drug. And is the new drug better than the old drug? So this is a problem which is discussed in statistics problem, inference problem, it's called inference. And that theory was developed by Neyman and Pearson. Neyman is a Polish statistician and Pearson is a British statistician. They have developed a theory and that comes under testing of hypothesis. But then if you make a wrong decision, especially in terms of the drug, then you will be in trouble. So what Ward does is he introduces the penalty factor. He introduces what is called the loss factor. Loss. That is you will be penalized if you do a wrong decision. Suppose the new drug is not really as good as you but then many people may have serious problems. So that, in order to avoid that, he introduces the notion of loss function. And then he discusses and he discusses power from the I mean, he has borrowed many ideas from Gate, especially corporate Gate. 